wonderful. The music this morning. I don't know. Can you get a can you get a sense of what we're going to be talking about this month? <laughs> yeah, we're going to be talking about love this month. Uh, my name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I'm so happy to be with you here today. I am the spiritual director here, and it's my privilege to join you most Sundays uh, right here at our center uh, in beautiful San Clemente. And happy Labor Day. This is Labor Day weekend. This is the traditional weekend where we have hot dogs and hamburgers and, or maybe uh, a uh, impossible burger if you don't eat meat. <laughs> um, this is the, uh, an interesting holiday, I think, sometimes. It's a little bit ironic that we celebrate the labor workforce by not working, right? <laughs> by not working, by getting an extra day off, by spending more time with each other. And of course, the, the Labor Day uh, tradition started back in the 1900s when our workforce needed to be cared for. The working conditions and over, you know, large factories where men and women toiled to make the goods and uh, things that we needed as a, as a society and a culture needed to be, uh, uh, we needed to go in and make sure that they were safe places for them. And so Labor Day was part of that. It was part of creating that safe space. And so we honor all those people who um, really created the infrastructure in our country today and, and have given us the world we know today uh, in the US. So thank you, wherever you are. And we are talking about um, loving out loud this month. Now all year we have had this beautiful theme of living out loud. And this month we're going to be talking about love which is one of my favorite qualities of God. It's the one that resonates the most with me. It's that um, ability to begin to uh, look at love as a superpower, if you will, that thing that we can draw upon, whether we are joyous and everything's going our way, or even when things aren't going our way. Love can serve us in a really powerful way. And so we're going to be looking at loving out loud all month. And I think that when we think about this idea of loving out loud, it gives us an opportunity to maybe lean in a little bit and go a little deeper with life. Because I'm going to suggest not the, you know, typically when we talk about love, it's rainbows and unicorns and all the wonderful things that we, that we love about love. Um, but sometimes love can serve us when we're really challenged. The name of this um, uh, talk today, the talk title that's, uh, that we're working with is I Love Myself So Much. And if you've been around our movement for any length of time, you may remember the, the kids and the teens singing that song, I Love Myself So Much. And the, and the lyrics go, I love myself so much that I can love you so much, so you can love you so much, so you can start loving me. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I enjoy that song, but if I'm with, honest with you, sometimes it makes me a little uncomfortable to say I love myself so much, because there's still parts of me that I don't necessarily love. There's still parts of me that I feel a little uncomfortable with. And it's probably just me. I'm sure there's nobody else here that feels that way. <laughs> I've, I've, you know, as, I, as we mature, we, we chill out a little bit. We get more comfortable with ourselves. You know, I'm pretty comfortable with my mind. I'm grateful for this teaching of con consciousness that has really helped me to have a uh, rich relationship with my thought life. And I'm pretty comfortable with my thoughts and my, um, and my feelings and, and my emotional self. That's a place where it's easy to love myself. And then it comes to, you know, it's, it's, it's body, mind, and spirit, right? And so then it comes to my body. And that's a place where I'm maybe not so much in love with myself. And that's where I have to do some of my heavy lifting. And sometimes there's things that are happening in the world that I don't love how I might show up 
and under certain circumstances. I might find myself in a situation that um, really upsets me or I really want to protect somebody and, and I might behave in a way where I don't love myself so much. So this invitation of this song <laughs> and this title and when, as we begin this um, month of looking at love and loving out loud is to look at ourselves and the places that need more love. And we often, I don't know about you, but there's often opportunities for me to do that, <laughs> unfortunately. Typically, I know that there's an opportunity for me to pour more love in a situation when I get triggered, when something happens that makes me upset, that makes me extremely sad, that makes me angry, when my emotions begin to spin a little bit. It's a clue that I'm out of balance with my relationship with spirit and my relationship with life and my relationship with myself. And so that's a perfect opportunity for us to begin to, to really lean into love. And loving ourselves comes first, like the lyrics of the song. Because like it or not, you see the world through your perspective. You see the world through how you are. You experience the world through your own feelings and your um, emotions and your thoughts. And so when we have those pockets of not loving ourselves, they too influence how we see the world. And that sounds really complicated, but all I'm talking about is projection, right? You, you, you know the, the, the idea of projection where oftentimes when I'm looking out into the world and I'm feeling triggered, there's something in me that is projecting outward. And I'm seeing through that lens. And I might not be, you know, clear or balanced. And so love offers me an opportunity to rebalance myself. Now, I know some of you might be thinking that, wait a minute, when, the, when some of these tragedies happening, when somebody goes in with a gun in a grocery store and shoots people, and I'm triggered by that, what do you mean? Does that mean I don't love myself? I'm not suggesting that. But I am suggesting that there might be something in us when, when the dust gets stirred up within us, that it might be an opportunity for us to find a way to um, apply love to the situation. And I'm not suggesting that we, we make excuses for um, horrific behavior. But I am suggesting that there's always a loving response to everything that we experience. And sometimes the things that trigger us out in the world are um, a little, it's, it's, a li it's very subtle. We don't actually catch it right away. I uh, have a dear friend who told a story about many years ago, she was watching Howard Stern. Now, did you all familiar with Howard Stern? He was big on the East Coast. <laughs> um, I imagine he might be, you know, he probably made his presence known out here on the West Coast. And um, Howard Stern had a reputation for pushing buttons and being um, raw and being profane. And so my friend was, happened to be uh, watching him one day and, and as she caught this little scene on the TV that Howard and a cohort were sitting there with laser pens and they were, there was a beautiful model in a bikini and they were pointing out her flaws. Oh, look, her, you know, her chin's too long, or, you know, or her legs don't even out, or something like that. And she got incensed. She was so angry that these two men would do that to this beautiful young woman on, you know, TV in front of everybody. And she carried that for a couple of days. And it bothered her, like, why am I keep, why do I keep sitting with this? Why am I so triggered by this thing that happened for 10 minutes on a TV show to a perfect stranger? And she puzzled with it for a couple of days until she found herself standing in the mirror and she was pointing out to herself in her mind all the little flaws that she saw in herself. And that suddenly came true to her. She understood why she was so upset. It was because there was something that she needed to bring forward and release, a practice that it was not loving of her own body temple. And so when I say it can be subtle, it can be really subtle. And when we look at this idea of uh, loving ourselves and loving ourselves more completely, 
um, it's, you know, as we do this path of being on the uh, uh, consciousness and doing spiritual practices, we get better at better at catching things, and those things that need to be caught get subtler and subtler. So it's our work to recognize when we're out of balance, when we might not be loving ourselves. The, the other place that not loving myself shows up, and I think I'm, I, I actually think I'm pretty average when it comes to uh, my experiences, um, are, you know, maybe in a professional sense. I can remember, you know, coming up in my first career as an accountant and feeling inadequate and, you know, getting really triggered when somebody would ask me questions about my work. And, and it was all centered around not having confidence in myself or not being compassionate with myself that maybe I had more to learn. Right? I mean, those are the places that we get tripped up. We sometimes hold these impossible standards for ourselves. And the most loving thing we can do is love ourselves exactly where we are. There's a um, wonderful man who talks about love a lot, and his name is Matthew Kahn. And he wrote a book, and just the title just really says it all. The title of his book is, Whatever Arises, love that. Whatever arises, love that. And the, he talks in his book that the, whenever things come up in our lives and in the world, it is a call for love. The Course in Miracles says that whenever there is a, um, a well, the, the Course talks about attack, but whenever we have those experiences, those knee-jerk experiences, those gut-wrenching experiences, it's a call for love. And so Matthew writes, he makes this remarkable claim, actually. He says that if every human being on the planet could love themselves unconditionally, the power of that amount of love would purify the oceans. Now, there's no way to prove that that's an accurate statement unless we start loving ourselves 100% unconditionally. And, um, you know, it's a practice, isn't it? It's really a practice. We don't... You know, it, when we're in this human experience, we don't, we fall short. We forget. We have an argument with somebody we care about and, and we take it personally. Our feelings get hurt. And we forget that we're beautiful beings just tripping our way through life, doing the best we can. But I really want you to think about those experiences because it's easy to love you when you're doing what I want. <laughs> it's easy to love you when everything's copacetic. It's easy to love and have a little love fest when we're all on the same page. But I think our call as spiritual uh, students and uh, people on the path is to choose love when it's not easy. You know, there's that great uh, saying, what would love do? Right? What would love do when we find ourselves? I remember going to my teacher, Jeffrey Proctor, you know, and I, I was a puddle and a mess, and I told him all about the drama that was going on, and he just looked at me with great compassion and said, well, what, what would love do? It's a great question to carry in your hip pocket when you're really struggling with a relationship or a situation. And to do the work to to think about what, it, what is the most loving thing to do. Sometimes the most loving thing to do is walk away, right? Let it be. Sometimes the most loving thing to do is scoop somebody up and let them know, just like the beautiful words of some of the songs we've sung this morning, that you are loved more than the stars, more than the mountains are high. But it takes discernment, it takes spiritual practice. One of the things that, one of the tools that I use are, are two of them actually, are prayer and meditation. They help to keep me clear. And I don't, um, I don't always have the luxury to, to, you know, be in the middle of something and say, could you wait for about 20 minutes? I'm gonna go meditate and then we'll come back to this. <laughs> But what I know about my meditation practice is it does create kind of a storehouse in me. It creates this place for me to draw upon in the moment, whatever that moment happens to be when it comes up. There's a, um, 
another book that I was drawing upon as I was thinking about this topic, and um, it's called The Principle of Oneness. It's a, it's a pretty obscure little book that I happened upon through a colleague, and, um, and he, the, the piece in here I want to read to you is, I think, very prevalent and speaks to why, why exactly should we make this thing called loving ourselves and self-love and self-compassion, why it should be really high on our priority list. And so the author writes, all negative emotions will feel unpleasant and that is your indication that something is out of balance with God. All emotions that feel unpleasant are signals of inconsistency within the collective consciousness. These inconsistencies are often false beliefs of duality in the universe and in opposition to the natural unity of the principle of oneness. If you attack or wish ill of someone, you are attacking and sabotaging yourself. If you hate others, you hate yourself. Instead of reacting with dislike or hate, choose instead to just allow that part of you to exist without any judgment. This is the enlightened choice. And so when I read that, I thought about this, this high idea that in this, with this principle of oneness that we subscribe to, that I, can't separate myself from the saints and the sinners. I can't separate myself from the do-gooders and the, the people who cause havoc because we're all one. And the way that I begin to treat my mind spiritually is with love. What is the most loving thing for me to do in any situation when I come across those challenging relationships or episodes in my life? What is it that love wants me to do in response? What I know about love is that it's truly a superpower and that it dissolves everything unlike it. It doesn't destroy things, it absorbs, it encompasses, it, it brings into itself all the things that are unlike it. And it's, it's not, and I'm not talking about conformity or, or, or uh, trying to create a world where everybody's the same. What I'm really talking about is that love makes room for our uniqueness. Love makes room for the, I mean, if you look around this room right now, no two of us are alike unless your twins were here and then we <laughs> But no two of us are like, we are each endowed with our own features, with our own body temples, with our own thoughts, with our own predispositions, with the things that, that the gifts and the challenges, they're all gifts from God. They're all unique and they're all what makes us, us authentic. And so when we can remember that love knows how to make room for it all, and then when we can have that be our choice in any situation, wow, maybe Matt Kahn is right, that that kind of love can heal the planet and clean the oceans and lift us up. It's a practice. It really is a practice. And, and I know these are high ideals that I, that I'm sharing with you. Um, one of my, well, before I share that, how many of you have done the um, I love you practice? You, you, maybe you, you think you did or you didn't. We're, I, maybe we could try it right now. And so what I'm going to invite you to do is to practice some deep self-love, and it's really simple. So if you'll just close your eyes for a minute. And take a deep breath. And bring forward an image of yourself. Maybe standing in front of the mirror brushing your hair. Picking out an outfit for the day. Just see yourself in front of you. 
And as you look at that image in your mind's eye, say, I love you. Take it in. And I'm going to ask you to go a little deeper with this. And as you continue to hold that image of yourself, I'm going to invite you to say out loud, I love you. All together now. I love, I love you. you. Yeah. Hear those words. Take it in. You can open your eyes when you're ready. It's such a simple thing. You can do that when you look at yourself in the mirror. Saying it out loud is important. And the reason is that our words carry vibrationary energy. So being able to say, I love you, when you look at your own image, or even when you go within and you picture your image, and saying it out loud is a great way to feel some discomfort maybe, or maybe it's really easy for some of you. Maybe it's like it was a snap. And, and it'll depend on how much practice we're doing. Because in this thing called life, we have ups and downs. We remember, we forget. <laughs> we have a heated argument, and so oftentimes we forget until we can remember. But that practice can bring us back to something really powerful, that place of self-love that, just like the airline stewardess will tell you, that you need to put your own oxygen mask on before you can help others. Self-love is that way as well. We need to love ourselves and to root out those places where we, where we are unloving to ourselves, where maybe we have some self-talk that isn't kind, where we're not compassionate to ourselves when, when maybe we make some, a mistake. And when we fall off the beam, you know, when we miss the mark, it's not about beating ourselves up. It's just about compassionately bringing us back to love. One of my favorite quotes in the um, Bible, it's actually both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, is this, love God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind and all of your strength. And for purposes of our, our inquiry today, as we look at self-love, and, and as we know in our philosophy, it's all God. There's no place where God is not. God is here. God is in you. God is in you. God is in, There's no exception to God is everywhere. And so when we look at this love, because love knows. Love knows the next thing, right move to make. Love knows when it's time to take care of yourself and maybe back away. Love knows. And so when we have those, I'll call them when we're tempted not to love, because I get tempted from time to time, and I imagine you do as well. When we're tempted not to love, we can remember this powerful, this powerful line from Scripture that it, when we can love God with all of our all of us, with everything we have, be all in, that we really can uh, experience miracles, that healing happens, that revealing happens. And all month we're going to be looking at this idea of love, and I'm going to look at it from a couple of different angles, but I want us to start this week by looking at loving ourselves and that the most loving thing we can do in any situation is to choose love and to look at what love, how love wants to show up in some of our, you know, in the, in the easy places, but also in the prickly places. So my invitation to you is to do what the Course in Miracles says, where it says that every attack is a call for love so look at those places where you might be triggered and see what wants more love because it's your job, because you're triggered, <laughs> to find the love in it. Thank you very much.
So let's go ahead and pray. What I know is that there is only one life. That life is perfect. That life is God's life. And that life is my life now. So I choose as I move through this week to see God everywhere I look, in the lovely places and the unlovely places, and to choose love, love for myself and love for the world around me. For this is an opportunity, this loving thing that we're talking about. It is an opportunity to embrace life to pour love on it and to watch it transform. Watch it transform our own lives and to watch it transform the lives around us. And so it is with deep gratitude that I hold this highest idea of loving all life, loving myself first, and then loving you with all of my heart and all of my soul and all of my mind and all of my strength. So we give thanks for this highest ideal and we give thanks for the courage and the strength to walk it out this week to be those lovers of life and lovers of God everywhere we go. And so we simply release this knowing that this call to love is never too great and we are always supported together we say, and so it is. Thank you very much.